Happy Wednesday night, everyone. My name is Melanie with Thriving in the Fishbowl, and I am continuing my series on how can you sleep smarter. All right, so we have five things that we've already talked about this week, okay? We said you need to, in order to sleep, I'm not telling you um, exactly, you know, you need to sleep this many hours, but I am telling you ways that you can sleep smarter. So number one, get some sunlight during the day. Number two, avoid screens right before bed, which um, we're all kind of breaking right now because I'm talking to you on a screen and I'm going to bed as soon as I get done with this video. Um, have a caffeine curfew, so um, I suggested you stop caffeine after 2 o'clock. Be cool. Keep your house between 60 and 68 degrees when you're sleeping. And fix your gut. What you eat determines how you sleep. So today, these are probably two of my two favorite tips that I'm going to share with you about sleep. And these have um, just changed the way that I sleep have slept since I started reading this book. And so um, what I want to talk to you about is how we should be sleeping today. Okay, so number six, we've done five things I just gave you. Number six is sleep at the right time and in the right amounts. Okay, and I have a quote for you. Um, there's a renowned neurologist who studies, you know, the brain and how sleeping works and everything. He said, timing your sleep is like timing an investment when the stock market. It doesn't matter how much you invest, it matters when you invest. And if you've ever invested money, you know about that, okay? And so, this has been a life-changing discovery for me, all right? Um, the author of Sleep Smarter, his name is Sean Stevenson, he advises that we sleep during what is called the money time. And he is saying, you know what? It does not matter how many hours you sleep as long as you are sleeping during the money time. So when is the money time? The money time, he says, is between 10 o'clock, which is in 20 minutes from now, and 2 o'clock. It doesn't matter when you sleep as long as you're sleeping in those hours. And I was like, whoa, when I read this book, it was in the summer, and I thought, it's still light outside at 10 o'clock. And so basically, that's a window. Like, if you live in the South, your money time is 10 o'clock to 2 a.m. However, if you live in Michigan, where we live, a few hours after it gets dark at night to, you know, and then four hours, that's your money time. And so here's what he says. He says that we get the most beneficial hormonal secretions and recovery by sleeping during this money time. All right, and so it works with the our just like I talked about that circadian rhythm the other day. It the the sunlight affects how we sleep, and so try to sleep during those hours. Okay, so a lot of you may be saying, well, you know, it's almost ten o'clock, and I am getting my second wind. All right, and I say that all the time. This has been our number one battle. Well, not number one, but a big battle is because Dana always wants to go to bed. Like he would go to bed at nine o'clock and get up at four every day if I let him. Okay. But he wants me to go to bed at the same time as him. And so I'm like, I am not ready to go to bed at 9 o'clock. I'm a night person, you know, obviously right now. All right. And so I looked up um, what he says about the second wind. And he said, you know, and we're reading this right now. We're saying, hey, I got our second wind. But what happens around 10 o'clock, our body is goes through a transformation following a natural rise in melatonin. The purpose of this transformation is to increase internal metabolic energy to repair, strengthen, and rejuvenate our bodies. Okay, heightened production of antioxidant hormones happen during this time to protect our DNA from damage, improve our brain, and more. And so if you're asleep during this time, that's great. However, if you're awake at 10 o'clock when this time rolls around, that increase in our metabolic energy can be called our second wind. So now you know. All right. Unfortunately, if you live where we live in Michigan, shift work is a huge thing here. Okay. There are so many people that work at night, especially with GM. We live right in the heart of Motor, you know, right near Motor City and everything. And the only thing I can offer to you, um, the, the big thing about the shift work is it, um, studies have shown they have, they're chronically sleep deprived or higher levels, higher rates of certain kinds of cancers and higher levels of diabetes. So the only thing that I can tell you in relation to those is that you try to follow all the strategies except for this one. And then, um, you know, the author even suggested that you do like um, a couple months on shift work and a couple months off. And I thought, well, he obviously doesn't know how. Um, so, so, um, so finally for this section is the biggest thing that has revolutionized my sleeping. First of all, we need to understand what REM sleep is. Okay, and here's the definition. It's a kind of sleep that occurs at intervals during the night and is characterized by rapid eye movements, more dreaming and bodily movement, and faster pulse and breathing. During normal sleep at night, 
our body follows a predictive pattern and it moves back and forth between um, deep restorative sleep, which is deep sleep, and more alert stages, which is non-REM sleep and non-REM non and dreaming, REM sleep, okay? These stages of the REM and non-REM sleep, they come together and they form a sleep cycle. So every sleep cycle where you go around these ty ty types of sleep is 90 minutes, all right? Some people can go for two hours. However, um, what happens is we want to sleep in cycles. And so you should plan your sleep in 90 minute increments. So for me, um, a lot of times I will try to do... Um, I like to, you're getting your second win, good. Um, I like to say, yes, I'm gonna get five sleep cycles every night. That's five 90 minute cycles of seven and a half hours. However, most often lately, I've been doing 11 to five, which is four sleep cycles. Now, I'm not gonna tell you, you need to sleep seven to nine hours you know, each night. However, the author strongly suggests that you do not get any less than four sleep cycles, which is six hours of sleep. Um, so, so if you're going to say that you're going to sleep nine hours, that would be six sleep cycles. And so if we say that we um, decide we're going to go to bed from 10 to 5, well, you're seven hours. You're right in the middle of a 90-minute cycle when you wake up. And so you're just going to feel so tired, which is another reason you're going to hit, hit the snooze button all the time. And I will tell you that I am the self-proclaimed queen of the snooze button and I have been practicing sleeping in 90 minute cycles and I have noticed so much difference in not wanting to hit the snooze as much because I don't know if I'll ever be cured from hitting the snooze button but since I started doing it in 90 minute cycles and so my husband I think I drive him crazy because I'm like I'm right at six hours don't talk to me I have to fall asleep right now you know and so um but it really has changed the way that I sleep okay all right so that is that one okay number seven so we just did number six which is two sleep at the right time and in the right amount. So maybe you want to say, how, am I, how long am I going to sleep tonight? And do it in 90 minute increments, which is a sleep cycle, and let me know how it goes. Number seven is to create a sleep sanctuary in your bedroom. Like it or not, your bedroom is not meant to be a miniature Best Buy, all right? Because a lot of our bedrooms have a TV, they have a cell phone, they have, some people like have like um, crazy amount of electronics in their rooms. They have a stereo. I mean, just think about what's in your room. Your bedroom is meant for two things. It's meant for sleep and activities between a married couple. It is not meant to entertain everybody. And so we need, your, we need our bedrooms to be a safe haven and a comfortable place for sleeping, not a place where we have all these electronics. And in fact, um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but um, higher rates of electronics in our bedrooms and being around the electronics all the time are tied to a lot of um, cancers and everything else. So... Um, what can you do about this at night? Now, also, how many of you check your phone in the middle of the night? When you check your phone in the middle of the night, you know what you're doing? You're lighting your brain right up where it's not going to be able to fall back asleep again or you're going to have them back asleep. And so here is my advice for you, okay? The electronics out of your bedroom, no electronic teddy bears, okay? Get a house plant to improve the air quality in your room. Um, unless you're like me and you kill like every single house plant you touch. So I just can't do plants. All right. And finally, keep it blacked out at night, okay? My husband and I have this disagreement because I will go, like, when we're at night, I will go to a red light, and I'll close my eyes, and I'll tell him when it turns green. And he, and like, in the morning, if he wants to get on my bad side, he turns on the lights in our bedroom, and I'm not absolutely insane, all right? Because I can see through my eyelids. And I actually looked and, and read this in a book. It's true. Your skin has receptors that pick up light just like your retina does, so in a sense, your skin can't actually see, all right? So I am right till day now, okay? All right, but um, in addition to this, studies show that the more exposure to light during the hours you're supposed to be sleeping suppresses your melatonin, which you need. Um, melatonin, some things that it does, and I'll have a list on my blog, um, it improves your immune system, it normalizes blood pressure, enhances DNA um, protection and um and it decreases risk of osteoporosis, alleviates migraines, improves your thyroid. I can go on and on. Improves insulin sensitivity and weight, re weight reduction. So, a few tips. Get some dark curtains. Get the lights and electronics out of your room. Buy a real alarm clock and try sleeping without your phone in your room. I don't, my phone does not go into my room at night. Now, Dana's does just because of the nature of his job. Because if someone were to call him in the middle of the night, he needs to be able to answer. All right? And if you are going to have electronics in your room, keep them six feet from your bed. 
all right? Because there's actually science behind that. Now, I am just giving you highlights. If you want the deep science in this, you need to, and I highly recommend you buy the book, Sleep Smarter. Um, I'm not getting paid to tell you all that. I love the book. It has changed my sleeping, all right? Because I used to be where my kids would come up come and wake me up in the morning and say, Mom, we already have our math and phonics done. Um, are you going to come do school with us? Because I did not get out of bed. Now I get up and I exercise every morning at 530. So if I can do it, I know that you can do it. All right. So tomorrow we're going to talk about how exercise and weight can contribute to your sleep patterns. So that'll be fun. All right. So um, I love the comments. Um, someone said, I have such a simple room. My bedroom has two soft lights and we don't do electronics in the bed. No TV or anything. Yes, we do too. Um, we don't have anything on the walls in our room. So um, we, have, we have one thing. Um, but um, so anyway, so hopefully this has helped you. And so tonight, just to recap, our two things are sleep at the right time and in the right amounts. And I love to hear from you if you try the 90 minute cycles. And then number seven is to create a sleep sanctuary. So I hope you all sleep great tonight, and thank you so much for watching, and I will be posting the um, text version of this on my blog in just a minute for you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.